This week, I went to watch some of the world's best tennis players at the Queen's Club Championships. It's one of 13 ATP 500 events, and seeing as I'm going to be returning to tennis next week, it's the perfect opportunity to get some inspiration for my game and watch some elite level tennis from a courtside angle. So stay tuned, you don't want to miss it. For the day, we were lucky enough to get partner suite tickets thanks to Dunlop, which included hospitality, food, this amazing view of the court, and an area where you can watch all of the players practice, but I'll talk more on that later in the video. The day started off at 12 o'clock from these seats, as you can see, pretty much right next to the court. You can see how these guys are hitting the ball. Dominor against Fakina. Dominor, slightly more of an agile player, hitting it really low over the net, and Fakina liking to get a bit more top spin on the ball, a bit more of a clay-oriented player, so it'll be interesting to see how he did on a grass court. Now Dominor did take the first set 6-4 in a pretty tight battle and now Davidovic Fakina is going to need to find a way of hitting more shots like that to do some damage to Dominor using the grass against him even though he is a speed oriented player. Now one of the biggest takeaways I took from this match was just how concentrated you have to be on every point. Here, Davidovic, Fokina down break point, finds a way into the net, good composure shown right there. But the way they're hitting it, the serve, super crucial in these types of points. And again, on grass, it's a totally different game style because as you can see here, even as a clay court specialist coming into the net, putting away balls. You can also see here, like in these points, using the slice a lot, super effective on the grass, it stays super low. You don't really realize how effective the slice is until you actually play on a grass court. So watching these guys utilize the slice, open up the angle there for Davidovic Fokina and come into the net and just get lucky there, showing how important the slice is to just mediate the point and change up the rhythm. And there it is, Davidovich Fokina taking it 7-5 in the third. A tough battle between those two and a valiant effort there from Dominor. Now straight after that match, I actually got the opportunity to go onto the courts with my friend Will, who was actually hitting there with Rusevori, one of the players who was playing Jack Draper in the next match that I'm going to show you. Now I was actually on the court, I guess technically as his strength and conditioning coach, warming him up with a few warm-up drills. Nonetheless, it was great to actually go onto the court and get a glimpse maybe of what it will be like next year if I'm able to hit there or potentially in the future play there. Again, this was great. It's not every day you're able to actually go onto the grass courts when all of the players are there training and practicing. So this was a great experience. And then straight after that, it was time to watch some players practice before we had lunch. Obviously, I had my sights set on watching Kasparud and Stan Vavrenka here striking some balls. The way that these guys hit with such depth and consistency is unbelievable even in training. And as you can see here, Kasparud playing with Thomas Fabiano. Now, I was also watching Will, of course, hitting with Rusevori, who was next up against Jack Draper. So this is what he was doing in his warm-up hit for his match on centre court. At one o'clock, it was time for food. I had this delicious array in the partner suite, which was really, really good. And I finished the whole plate, of course. Then it was straight out to watch the end of Kasparud's session, hitting backhands cross and slicing down the line when he wanted to. And a few minutes after that, Berrettini was hitting with Thomas Fabiano, working mainly on the serve as he had a match the next day. Now onto the second match of the day, Rusevori against Draper. Draper just breaking into the top 100. Rusevori already, I think, in the top 50. So this was a great matchup. Of course, Jack being a crowd favourite. So early on in this match, it was great that he was getting the crowd involved. Now, something you could see, of course, with the lefty against the righty, Rusevori was really using the serve, going out wide to the forehand of Jack, who was trying to maybe cover the backhand side a little more. And this match in particular, I think there was over 20 aces between the two of them. So from early on, both of them really utilizing the serve, which is something that definitely stood out to me, and really hitting the ball hard into the corners and keeping it low. Like you see there, neck cords, and Rusevori taking advantage of that by hitting it low over the net. I think Jack as well was very eager to come into the net. He knew that was his biggest chance on the grass courts. That's where he felt comfortable. And I definitely think that from watching this match, you could really see just how precisely these guys are hitting the ball every single time. I mean, of course, these are just the highlights, but I'm telling you guys, almost every point was pretty much like this.
Bruce Savoy did end up taking the first set 6-2 and it was going to be a long way back for Jack as he wasn't really able to have a foot in most of his service games but Bruce Savoy was looking so solid in his service games. But of course, there's nothing like having the crowd behind you as Draper holds to go 3 all. And at this point here, match point Rusevori, Jack knows he has to pull something special out of the bag here. And he does to save one match point and they took it to a tie break. And unfortunately, Rusevori took it 6-2 in the 6 all tie break. But I was very impressed with Jack and hopefully he can do some big things at Wimbledon. And straight on to the final match of the day, Bublik against Cilic. I was pulling for Bublik here. I think we're actually going to be hitting at Wimbledon this year, which should be super exciting. And Bublik was 6-2 up or 6-3 up in this first set tiebreak. And Cilic managed to find a way back here after saving a set point right there. And this is at 6 all 7-6 in the tiebreak. And Cilic taking it with nerves of steel. And in the second set, Bublik began to just relax a little bit, playing a few trick shots, but also missing easy shots like this, which obviously did cost him. And it shows you that professional players do even make mistakes too. But I think this is where he kind of came into his element a little bit, and it became pretty interesting again after going 3-love down. And as you can see, this was to go four all in the second set. So after relaxing, he did end up coming back. And in this second set, Bublik got it back to five six, where he was serving to take us to a second tie break. But this is where it got dangerous as Chilic went 30 love up in this game. But Bublik fought back to 30 all. But then gave Chilic his first match point. And eventually Chilich did take it in the second set. And that was the end to a very, very fun and entertaining day at the Queen's Club. That's the day done. So guys, make sure to like for the YouTube algorithm. Next week, I'm going to be back to tennis. So make sure that you turn notifications on to be notified when that video comes out. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching.